Hey guys, this is Gene Jensen, and I'm about to go on another redfish trip down to Louisiana. Um, I'm taking my new Mayfly, and what I'm going to do in this video is I'm going to show you how I rig it up, and I'm going to show you how I rig up my, my cameras. All right, so this is the 2018 Jackson Mayfly. It's got a few changes from the factory, so uh, I'm going to go through those, and I've also done quite a, a, quite a lot of modification to it to make it work for me. Um, it was originally designed and it is a fly fishing kayak. It's got uh, rod holders for fly rods and things like that, but I've, I've changed a few things, make it work for bass fishing, work for just about anything. And I absolutely love this kayak. It tracks great, it's, it sits low in the water, and it, uh, it doesn't catch a whole lot of wind, and it's just a great stable platform. It's just about as stable as the big rig, just a little bit narrower, but I love it and I'm excited to take it out in Louisiana for redfish. But let's start at the beginning. You're at the front of the boat. Talk about a little bit of stuff. All right, very front, I've got a mighty mount. When I go over my, uh, my uh, camera setup and stuff like that, you'll see exactly why I've got that sitting way up in the front of the boat. This right here, my anchor rope runs through it when I'm fishing rivers and things like that. I don't think I'm going to need it for the redfish trip, but it stays there nonetheless. That way I don't lose it. I put a pad right here underneath the uh, the, the uh, paddle holder, as you guys can see, the paddle holder, you know, holds a paddle when you're not using it or whatever. Um, and you really have to be stealthy when you're sight fishing for redfish. So that's kind of why I put that there. I found that pad, um, it was a piece of scrap that was laying around uh, the Jackson plant when I went and pick up my kayak. But you guys can find it online. I think it's called, uh, oh, I can't remember what it's called. But anyway, you can find it on ki in kayak stores, just some soft padding that goes underneath there. Pa uh, the paddle slides right up underneath it. This is my Bending Branches Angler Pro, 100% carbon fiber, super lightweight. It's gonna be a fun one to, to, to have this year. All right, let's look up underneath. Pull this hatch out, open it up. If I can get my fingers under there. All right, so in here I've got my phone case um, and my, uh, my VisiCarbon Pro it is a, matter of fact, let me show it to you. I'll set it up real quick. All right, so the VisiCarbon Pro is basically a safety flag and safety light. This is like, the, the flag was actually the bag that it, it was in that you guys saw. It screws into a, into the, the gear track, but that is the VisiCarbon Pro. It's got a light right here that you twist this to turn it on. It's got reflectors, it's got a flag. It's really, really important to have that for safety reasons, especially if there's a lot of boats around and you're on big water. All right, so next down the line, is the stand assist strap. Um, this doesn't look like much, but to, to stand up in this thing, it, this, any kayak, this really, really makes a difference. Um, and another thing is, is a lot of people I've heard online breaking these, these straps that are on the, the Jackson seats. And the reason is, is because they're using the seats to stand up and not the stand assist strap. They're pushing off on the seat and putting all their weight on it. And eventually it's gonna wear and tear on all the stitches. It's gonna tear up your, your seat. So use, the stand assist sis strap, don't use your seat. All right, so next thing down is the pedals. Um, I've got them pushed all the way forward. I don't have a, a, any electronics in the boat. I'm not gonna need them for this trip. So I didn't, didn't bother installing them yet, but when I, when I install them, I'll get to do a video and show you guys how I do it. It's pretty neat. The, uh, I love the pedals because they're, they're, they're not in the way over here. They don't snag onto anything, um, really comfortable. And then you can put hooks right in here if you, you know, something you can get to really quick. You can put your lures down, but I love the deck space on this thing. It does not in any way get in the way. Now, you think that's a rod holder, which it's not. When you're standing up sight fishing for, uh, for redfish, and I'm gonna spend most of the day standing up, this is what I have this thing for. You slide it right in here, and this rests right there just like that. And you rest your paddle on it and that way you don't have to bend over too far to pick up your paddle again and you can lightly lay it down and it'll be really a nice i'm going to put some padding or something right in there so it's not quite so loud when you lay it down but that's why i have it there i think i stole that idea from matt ball thanks matt but uh that's why it's sitting there i love it love it especially for a fat guy who can't bend over because his belly's too big <laughs> speaking of standing up this little item right here I picked up matter of fact that's upside down let's turn it up right I picked up last year and it's made by a local tackle shop and I'll leave the link down in the description to their website but down in Louisiana and it's you it goes around your waist and it 
you clip your your belt to it so as you're watching the videos that i'm going to come out that i'm going to put out of this redfish trip you'll see me clip my paddle into this and strap it down and that way i can uh it's just easier to fish that way it just gets the paddle out of the way even quicker than just laying it down and laying it across there um, i had to replace the strap i took an old broken uh sea tow sea tug strap and it's actually a lot better than the one that came with it and i'm going to show the guys at that tackle shop if i can get by there this buckle and how this thing is rigged up because it really is a nut that strap is a lot better than uh than the one they had on there but uh yeah stole that from a broken sea tug uh, kayak cart for you guys that don't know what that is all right so next thing in line are these little hatches that are right here okay so this one right what i use these for storing my soft plastics storing tools and anything like that but mostly just soft plastics they fit in there perfectly they're for fly fishing boxes but uh like i said it's not a fly boat for me so both sides i'll put my soft plastics in there and it'll be right there and out of the way all right i got my nrs i think this is called the chinook life jacket you guys know about that don't leave home without it my fish grips these were pretty cool uh i cast this year the guys at fish grips made these for me special uh, no, they don't sell them out and sell them because then they would get in trouble, but they made them as a gift for me. I've got two sets or two or a pair of them, but pretty excited to go dogs. The seat this year is just a little bit taller than the last one, the last year's seat, so it makes it a little bit easier to stand up. I even think they could go a little bit taller than that. New for this year is this little tray that's up underneath. Let's see if I can show you without getting my shadow in the way. It slides back and forth. Um, I leave it all the way forward. It's got these two little loops, one there and one there with a little divot right here for your rod handles. You just slide your rods in there when you're staging them. Uh, keeps them from not getting knocked around and, and knocked out of the boat. I love this little padded tray. I keep my lures in there that, I'm, that I've cut off my baits and just kind of leave them in there. I reach down and grab them and re real quick. Needs a little bit of work. Um, it's a little loud sliding up and down. So I'm gonna have to figure out how I can get it to be quiet as it slides forward and backwards. But I think if I just leave it forward, it's not gonna be a big deal. Let's talk about my net. Yak attack and ram mount are, are just a huge part of how I rig my kayak and they make most of the things that I rig my kayak with. with. But this right here is the yak attack landing, leverage landing net with the foam extension so you can put it down into a rod tube. Now I've modified this ram rod tube to where when you put this thing down in here, the handle locks in so this can't twist okay so there's no way that this is going to twist so it stays staged right there and as you can see when i'm sitting right there and i catch a fish and i need to grab my net i just reach over my head grab hold of the handle sling it out and it's ready to to land the net of course if the net was on the other side <laughs> but that's it so i love this net i have a bigger one for my boat it's incredible and there's the ran tube i'm talking about and it screws into the gear track that's in front of the the black pack all right so my black pack it's basically just my tackle box it's what keeps all of my tackle pretty much organized i've got my terminal tackle because that box never leaves this thing um, i've got my redfish lures jig heads, things like that. I rarely use anything else, maybe some top water. I'll have a top water box in here as well. But I find that when you're, when you're sight fishing for reds, you just have to get the bait close enough to them to see them, to see it and make a good cast and you won't spook them and they'll bite. So there's my top water box. And then my rain gear is down in there. Anything else that I need, lunch, stuff like that will go in my black pack. Black pack straps down real easy right there. Yak Attack also makes that. Um, has three rod tubes in the back. The rods I'm taking with me are a medium heavy, fast action uh, six foot seven Muse. That's the new Concept Z I'm gonna be beating up for the next few months to see whether I really like the fact that it has zero ball bearings, um, which so far so good. I took it on this last week and had a great time with it. Uh, the Concept A, uh, both of these have a 50 pound braid on them and a 20 pound fluorocarbon leader a little short 20 inch leader and then a black one and whatever i'm going to change all that up that's just for show uh, concept c these are both six five heavies um actually no this one's a six five heavy this one's a six 
uh, six seven medium heavy, and this is a this is a six five heavy. So, but uh, those are my frog rods, but they should be really good for for that. I love short rods because they're really accurate. Here in the back, you have a back hatch for my overnighters this year. That's going to come in real handy because it's big. You can stuff a lot of things in there. You can fit a lot of gear in that little that uh, that hatch. So that's going to be that's going to be great for the rest of the year. Move back up here. Um, this is the the uh, holder they have for a fly reel. Not even using that at all. I changed. There was a a little uh, strap down, little uh, holder right there for the rod handle. I changed it out to some Rand mount bases. Uh, I did it on both sides and. Uh, absolute uh, uh in you'll see when i when i do talk about my camera mounts and stuff like that you'll see why i have that right there and then last but not least in the back is my power pole micro uh battery powered um i i'm probably going to get the shorter shorter pole because when you get this real long pole like that it it raises your center of gravity and it and it makes your boat less stable because i'm standing up all day my camera equipment's up all you know up high that kind of stuff but that's how it's going to be rigged for the trip. All right, so let me take a minute to, uh, to set up my camera gear. I'm excited to show you this because I've got power in the kayak now, and uh, it's going to save me all of the heartache that I have when I, when I film. I'm going to run three GoPros. And uh, well, anyway, let me just set it up and, uh, and show you guys. I'm pretty excited. Now for the complicated part, filming my kayak trips. Uh, this is my new setup for this year. I just came up with it. This is the first test on this Redfish run. I really feel like it's going to be an awesome setup. It's a three camera setup. Actually, it's gonna be a four camera setup, including a waterproof one on a selfie stick for release photos and things like that. But I don't have that one on the boat. To start off with, Yak Attack and Yolotec have a huge part to play in the stuff I use to rig up my kayak. I'm sponsored by Yak Attack, not by Yolotec. I'm partnered with them. I help them design uh, products and help them test products and things like that and they really do trust my input because well this is what I do for a living so um, it is uh, it's been a lot of time a lot of fun working with them but so just understand that everything that I have here in my camera setup is either Yak Attack or um, or Yolo Tech so start off with my front camera now when you're when you're fishing for redfish you spend a lot of time standing up and it's so hard to get a good front view hook set I don't know, sight fishing uh, camera angle. So I stuck this GoPro Hero 5 all the way up front using, I think this is called like the Wishbone or T-Bone or something on Yak Attack. They have crazy names for all their stuff. But anyway, using this camera mount and what uh, the, the Hero 5 is, is voice controlled. So uh, I don't need to be up here to mess around with it. I've got power run to it. We'll talk about that in a minute, but I got power run to it. So it's gonna keep a battery life or keep uh, power on it all day long. And uh, I'm really excited about that new camera angle, and I'm probably going to use it a whole bunch uh, here in the future because it looks like it's going to be a really good angle. Now, my main camera, this is the one that I do all my filming with. Um, it's got the microphone set up to it. That's my Sony mic. Uh, I got two, two different mics, and I'll be using either one of those. That's the GoPro um, adapter to be able to hook a microphone and power up to your GoPro at the same time. Uh, hooks into the side just like that. So that's that. And... Uh, and so that's how I got that all set up. It's a it's a, a wireless microphone. These things are not cheap, uh, about six seven hundred dollars. But uh, if you want good sound, that's what you're gonna have to pay, anywhere from four to seven hundred dollars. So it sucks. Now, and then the back one, I have another Yak Attack pole. I can't. This is called the. I don't remember what it's called, but anyway, so it's <laughs> it's sitting up here. I've got a Hero Three back there. I'd like to have a Hero Five. I'm not. I uh, don't have enough money for that right now. So I'm just going to, uh, to, to deal with what I've got. And it, again, it's got power to it. I'm gonna run it with a remote control to be this smart remote right here. And uh, should, be a, should work until I can get a Hero 5 sometime next year. Just don't wanna spend that kind of money. So that's my camera setup. Let's talk about power. I am so excited about this. I put uh, two double uh, USB plugs in the boat. One there and one tucked in right here. And uh, I'm, the reason I'm excited is that I have been messing with batteries. These are my batteries. Let me dump them up here on the seat so you can. These are the batteries I take every day. 
okay? I've got a ton of Hero 5 batteries because they go through batteries like mad. I've got extended life batteries for my Hero 3s. These are batteries for my DSLR that I have in my hand. Just a ton of batteries and I'm always changing them out and it just slows down the fishing. So I was like, man, I'd really like to get my kayak powered. Well, Yolotech is coming out with, and I was one of the first ones to get one from what I understand, a power box or what they're calling a power station, the Yolotech power station. It's stuck way up in here. Get the handle, hard to do this one handed. That is the Yolotech power station. I want you guys to see what's on the side. You got on off switches, waterproof on off switches. You get 12 volt plugs. You charge it using the bottom 12 volt plug. And then right here, this actually takes a light post. In my boat, I use this. I stick the Yolotech power stick in there, powers my, my camera all day long and then some, and I can move it around the boat. You'll see that here in the future. But, so it's got a 12 volt battery up underneath this pad and it's got room for a little bit of storage. Um, I store a uh, 12 volt plug in there and then the charging cord and that kind of stuff is all in there. So to be excited is, is an understatement. This is going to fix all of the major problems that I have while I'm out on the water. And they say it'll run a GoPro for three or four days. I don't know, for a, <laughs> for a long time. So it shouldn't have a problem running what I need to. And what I'll end up doing is plugging my electronics into that bottom plug in this boat. So I wired the whole boat. That sticks right up in there. And then I can run power cords. This is also, this cord right here is pretty cool. It's from Yolotech. It's got, I know, five different plugs. I can plug it into everything that I have. But I'm so excited about this, guys. You just don't even know. So I've got power run to every camera in the boat. And this Hero 3 in the back, I had to buy a USB extension. I don't know if you guys can see this or not, but a USB extension so I can plug and keep power to the, to the Hero 3, at least until I get a Hero 5. All right, so before I let you go, for all you kayak heads out there, um, Chad Hoover and I are putting on our second annual Bienville seminar. It's a three-day seminar. Um, it's uh, $1,500 a person. You get to fish Bienville for three days. You get to sit in seminars with us in the evening, hang out with us, fish with us. We reduce the numbers down to 10 people. So there's only a few slots left in the seminar. So go check it out. Sign up. Um, if you can afford it, go. Man, it's a, it's a blast. We had fun last year, caught some huge fish and uh, just a whole lot of fun. But we're gonna, we reduced it from 40 down to 10 to make it more manageable, manageable and make it to feel like you guys are, are more of a part of it. You get to have more one-on-one -on -one, one -on -one time fishing with uh, Chad and I. So anyway, well, like I always say, be sure to introduce somebody to fishing. Introduce them to my channel. Let me help you teach them how to fish. More importantly, get out on the water, go out and catch some fish, and have a great day.